Good afternoon. Um, this session, um, I'm going to talk about um, our test and technology, um, our test and technology in a safety context. So, how we can use our, our test and test technology uh, for functional safety in uh, automotive applications. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is talk briefly about um, what we're looking for in the automotive space. Uh, what are the standards? What are the requirements? Uh, what do we need to do to produce a safe automotive IC? Um, then I'm going to talk about our test solutions um, and how they can be used in a, um, an automotive context as a safety mechanism. Um, and then I'm going to look a bit about um, data monitoring um, and how we can start to extract the data from our automotive ICs and, and what we can do with that data. And then I'll take a, a very brief look into the future. So, to start with, let me kind of break down um, test of automotive ICs into two very distinct areas. Uh, first off, we have the manufacturing side. So, this is really um, the quality that you need to achieve um, before your automotive IC is, is good enough to go out the door. Um, so, that's making sure that um, essentially you have zero defects. Uh, so, we refer to that as zero DPPM. Um, and for that, we have a whole range of uh, advanced fault models uh, for our DFT um, to ensure that you get the highest quality possible um, to make sure all of those defects are removed before um, actually shipping uh, the silicon. You need to make sure that you don't confuse this with functional safety. So functional safety is uh, the other aspect of automotive ICs, and that's not just making sure the device is defect free when it leaves the factory, um, but also to make sure that it stays defect free throughout its whole lifespan. Uh, and obviously, that's kind of critical when you're putting these devices into to vehicles and those devices and controlling um, the driver functions of those vehicles, um, which are, are taking over our, our normal human driving functions today. So if we take a little bit of a look at the, uh, the sort of thing we're doing in the area of manufacturing tests. So as I said, we want to achieve the highest possible quality um, for our devices before they're shipped out the door. Um, now that could be um, looking at the, the, the various uh, fault models that we have today. So stuck at, at speed um, and our cellarware. Um, but it, it goes one step further than that. So if you look at the, the typical bathtub curve that we see uh, for a product life cycle, um, we still have this area of um, uh, early life failures. Uh, and the regular fault models are not able to detect the faults that cause those, those early life failures. So one of the areas that we're doing a lot of research in and that we're developing new fault models for is areas such as stress tests. So with stress test, during the manufacturing process, um, you're, you're stressing the device to make sure that um, all of those potential latent defects that could be hiding, that could cause those uh, early life failures, are, are flushed out and they're, they're identified before the, the device is absolutely shipped. So um, with the aim to make sure that we ship devices um, and we end up with being able to say that we have zero customer returns because ultimately for our, our automotive uh, partners that's the end goal so they don't want to have um, any early customer returns so that's everything that's going on at time zero um, and then we look at the in-system side of test uh, and there we've got our, our, our BIS solutions um, our in-system test and uh, um, and that is all wrapped up in the, the certification of the ISO 26262 standard. Um, so what are we looking to achieve um, to meet that ISO 26262 standard? Well, depending on the actual application of your device um, in terms of what it's going to be doing in the vehicle really depends and dictates the quality level that you need to achieve. So. For example, if you have an infotainment system, um, it may be that you only need to achieve ASIL level B. 
Um, if it's a, uh, a braking system or part of the, the steering control or something that would potentially be catastrophic if it failed, um, then you're looking more at the ACE or D level. So you can see there's a variety of different um, levels at which we can certify um, these um, automotive ICs to. Uh, and here you can see the various metrics in terms of um, the amount of faults that we need to be able to detect um, before we can certify our devices to those, um, those potential quality levels. So um, <clears throat> for ASIL level B, we need to be able to achieve a 90% uh, a coverage of the single point faults. Um, but if we're looking at ASIL level D, which is essentially safety critical, um, then we need to be in the 99% range. So, um, so it's, it's very important when you're deciding what your, um, your, your safety level is, that you make sure you um, set the expectation um, early on in the design cycle. Um, so when it comes to using um, test solutions as a safety mechanism, um, what we're essentially talking about here is using the, the, the regular structural testing um, solutions uh, to achieve that coverage goal that we saw previously um, that's required for the ASIL standard. So um, Logic BIST in itself provides an extremely good safety mechanism um, because it's efficient, um, it, it's able to generate a, a very high coverage in a, a very relatively small number of test patterns. Um, and the, the test and solution is, is really quite unique in that it's, um, the logic BIST is, is actually combined uh, with our, um, our ATPG, our compressed ATPG solution, test compressed. So what does that actually mean? So it means that um, if you choose to use um, the test and logic BIST solution as your um, safety mechanism for your automotive IC, um, you have the advantage of being able to implement both manufacturing test using compressed ATPG and logic BIST um, within the same controller. Um, and the advantage here is because much of the technology is similar between what we do with compressed ATPG and what we're doing with logic BIST, um, the actual overhead of having both of these technologies on chip at the same time is actually quite minimal. So you have a single controller IP, which is our hybrid TK LBIS controller, um, and that's dynamically switchable um, during configuration. So when you're running manufacturing tests, you can configure the IP into uh, ATPG mode. And then when you're running in system, um, you're obviously running it in a logic based mode. So really giving you the best of both technologies uh, with, a, with a real minimal overhead. So if you look at the, the historical roadmap for logic based, um, you can see that over the years, it, it's very much migrated towards a, um, a, an automotive focused solution. Um, back in 2019, we introduced a technology called Observation Scan. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but it, it really is aimed to reduce the overall test time that, that customers were seeing and some of the challenges that comes with having a, uh, a significant number of test patterns with, with logic this. In 2020, um, we went through the full certification process of the, the, the BIST IP to really make sure that when customers were using our in-system test technology, um, they were able to do so with a high level of confidence. By, by putting our IP, our generated IP, through the actual certification process itself, um, it means that you can pick that IP up uh, and use it knowing that you're in a, you've got a safe solution to start with. Um, and in terms of the certification we achieved, um, because we wanted to make sure that we were able to achieve the, the highest certification level, um, we, we went to achieve the ACL level D. So what that means is when you insert our, our logic based, memory based, or uh, in-system test controller IP in your design, that has already been certified to ACL level D, um, so you know that that's, that's already covered. Then more recently, uh, with the introduction of SSN for manufacturing test, that adds an additional challenge. So it 
it very much simplifies um, and, and improves the capabilities of manufacturing tests. But then how do you integrate that with logic best? So in 2021, we introduced a, um, a combined SSN logic best flow, uh, which enables you to still be able to combine those two technologies. So really giving you the best of both worlds in terms of being able to use a full SSN flow for manufacturing tests, but at the same time still being able to use logic based for your, uh, your safety mechanism. So as you can see, a continual development through the um, over time of the, the various logic based technologies. So I mentioned observation scan. Um, so the real need for observation scan came about because as designs get more and more complex, um, they require more and more logic based patterns to achieve the, the desired functional safety coverage. Um, and then you very quickly run out of steam and the logic based test is taking, um, is taking too long and you're not reaching the requirements that you, you need for your, your functional safety certification. Um, so what observation scan is doing um, is really taking advantage of um, the test points within the design um, to be able to accumulate test coverage um, on every single shift cycle of the patterns, as opposed to just accumulating the coverage uh, on a per pattern basis. So what does that really mean in terms of, um, of, of savings and, 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 and gains? Well, because you're able to accumulate coverage on every single clock cycle as opposed to every single pattern, um, we can massively reduce um, the overall test time of using logic best um, in, in a number of cases um, up to nearly 20x uh, reduction in, in test pattern count. And why do we need to do that? Well, if you're familiar with the ISO 26262 standard, um, you'll be familiar with this diagram which shows um, that we have a number of requirements that we need to achieve um, in terms of timing. So the FTTI is the fault tolerant time interval. Um, this is the time that um, is required, the, the, the maximum time it takes from a fault occurring within the device um, to when the device and potentially the vehicle is put into a safe state. Um, part of that overall time is the diagnostics time interval. That's the time between when the fault occurs and the longest possible time it would take to actually detect that fault. So if you assume worst case, um, if it takes the entire logic based test to be able to detect that fault, um, then that worst case is your, your logic based test time. Um, so that's kind of a critical metric um, because if you're not able to meet that DTI with your logic based test, um, then you're never going to be able to achieve your fault tolerant time interval. So again, that's where observation scan comes in because if we look at the results from um, uh, a, a number of designs that we had for, for observation scan, you can see that um, there's two, two kind of gains you get from observation scan. One, um, you're adding additional test points, so you do see a, um, a bit of an improvement in terms of the overall coverage. So here you can see um, for design one, uh, there's just under a 2% two, uh, 2 coverage gain. Um, and then design two, there's a 6% coverage gain. So you see a, a, a small improvement in terms of the overall test coverage. However, the big gain that you see here is the reduction in the pattern count. So again, if you take the first design, D1, you'll see that there for a, uh, a regular logic based uh, implementation, um, to reach a baseline coverage of 90%, which, if you remember, is the, the target for ACL level B, um, it's taking nearly 53,000 patterns. Um, if we implement observation scan, you can see that we can bring that pattern count down to just over 3,000 patterns. So that is an absolutely huge reduction in terms of the, the logic based runtime. In fact, 16x reduction um, in the overall time it takes to run that test. Obviously, the technology is somewhat design dependent because it's based on the size of the various combinational logic cones. So you do see some 
variation in the results. But as you can see from the, the various example designs there, we see anything from a, a 3x improvement up to a 16, 17x improvement. So um, for the, the minimal overhead of adding uh, observation scan, because it is really just a very small addition to a regular um, logic-based implementation, um, you get a very significant gain and a very significant improvement um, on your, on your logic-based test time. And ultimately what that translates to is not just a reduction in test time, um, but if you're able to detect the faults um, faster, then actually what you're, you're doing is you're improving the overall safety of your, your automotive IC. So other technologies we have um, to help with functional safety, I've talked a lot about logic based, but memory based is another technology that is, is key to testing uh, the various parts of the design. And, and memory based again provides a nice safety mechanism. Um, obviously the challenge with memory based is that if you run memory based on a memory, you will destroy the contents of the memory. Um, so what we have is a non-destructive memory based controller which enables you to test the memory um, piece by piece throughout a, a longer duration. Um, but in doing that, we're able to retain the contents of that memory. Um, so in essentially you're, you're, you're testing the memory using logic bits without impacting any of the functional operation at all. Um, it's not completely independent of the functional operation. We do need to have a a handshake between the, the functional operation to know when we can safely access the memory and test um, the particular part of that memory. Um, but that's quite easily managed in the overall functional design of, of the device. It does mean that you then don't have to worry about all of the challenges that you have uh, in terms of having destructive memory best. We can manage fully non-destructive memory best um, for all the key memories in the, in the design. Another area that is, is really critical for automotive and memory based is um, when you have repairable memories, um, when you're doing um, various levels of testing and, um, and startup, you obviously have to load all of the repair registers in the, um, the memory based configuration. If it's a particular large device, this is normally done through a, a kind of a serial chain. Um, and it can amount to a significant amount of time in terms of startup. And as you're all familiar, when you step into your car, you don't want to press the button and wait for an extended period of time before you can start, start using the vehicle. So there are very tight time constraints imposed by the, the automotive OEMs as to how much time we can spend testing, um, testing the various components. So being able to split up that um, repair chain and, and load that in a parallel fashion. So having a, a distributed um, visor chain um, is something that we support for automotive to really speed up the overall startup process. Um, then another key component of um, a typical automotive product is, is analog. So very infrequently do you see a an automotive ic that doesn't contain some form of um, sensor or, or analog ip as part of the overall um, of part of the overall chip um, and analog is not exempt from the requirements of iso 26262 you still have to prove that you have the uh, the right levels of coverage of your analog ip um, to meet the certification requirements for, for ISO. So what we have in this space is a product called Test and Defect Sim. Defect Sim is an analog fault simulator, so it's able to fault simulate your, uh, your various analog tests to give you a, an indication and the ISO metrics um, to show what your um, potential coverage is of your, your analog IP. Um, and that can be fed into your um, ISO 26262 certification process. Um, the, uh, the FMEDA reports are generated directly from Defect Sim, uh, so can perform um, form part of the overall um, ISO certification process. 
Um, and then we get on to um, looking at more of a system level. So we've talked a bit, we've talked a lot about um, detecting um, physical defects within an automotive IC. Um, but then if we look more at a, at a system level, um, we can then start to use our embedded analytics technology um, to monitor the, the functional operation of the device once it's actually in the system. Um, and here we can start to look at things like functional buses, memory interfaces, um, monitor performance, and, and look at the overall um, functionality of the, um, the device um, and, and collect statistics and data um, from, from that whilst it's, it's actually running. And what that enables us to do is um, over and above what we can do with the, the test technology, um, we're, now, we're now able to monitor the device behavior and um, operation um, whilst the software content is, is running. So any, any issues between um, um, the, the software and the hardware running together um, can be easily identified and, uh, and um, during that, that whole process. So that brings us on to um, kind of how do we extract data from, from these devices. So going back to um, our test solutions, um, so we have a very well-defined um, uh, in-system test controller, uh, mission mode. Mission mode is connected to our uh, our IJTAG network, which really controls and monitors all of our, our in-system test technology. The, um, the mission mode controller has a, uh, a standard, industry standard APB bus interface. So it's really easy to hook up to a, um, a safety controller, CPU, um, which enables the, the, you to be able to start to drive your test content um, through software. So again, as everything is becoming more complex, it's no longer just a case of being able to uh, initialize my test content and say, run and see if it passed or fails. Um, it's becoming a requirement to run more and more complex test scenarios um, and also run them in different um, configurations. And being able to drive that through a CPU and drive that through software um, makes that whole management of that process uh, a, a, lot, a lot simpler. Also, in terms of collecting results, um, instead of just having a pass-fail flag, we're now able to collect uh, more detail on the operation of those tests. And again, using software, we're able to make kind of dynamic decisions on what to do um, based on the results that we get back from those tests. So, so for example, we can look at, if you start to see uh, failures in the system, um, we can make determination on what those failures are. Are they, are they critical to the overall operation of the vehicle? Do we have to halt the vehicle um, now? Or, or maybe it's just a light that's gone out and, and we can raise a um, warning light on the dashboard that says, take your vehicle in for a service at your, your next opportunity. So having that capability to be able to actually monitor the results and, and make decisions on what we see happening in the device um, is critical to a more optimized uh, operation overall. And then if we extend that whole safety island concept um, to manage more than just the overall test, um, we can start to pull in technologies like the embedded analytics, um, other functional safety IP within the device, uh, potentially third-party monitors. So if you have any other kind of monitoring technology as part of your overall uh, IC, um, being able to manage and correlate all of that data through a, a single edge processing device um, really brings the advantage of having all of that data in one place um, and being able to uh, manage it and process it there and then. Um, with the the additional benefit of once you have that data and you're able to process that data at the edge, um, you, you then have the ability to um, send the critical data uh, up to the cloud for, um, for offline analysis. 
Uh, and what we see in the automotive industry is there is currently a, a huge thirst for this type of data um, and the ability to monitor these devices over a whole fleet of vehicles rather than just looking at the data and the, um, the statistics from, from a single device. If we look into the future, um, I talked a lot about in-system tests. Um, as we see the quality requirements for automotive continue to increase, um, the need to have a higher quality um, uh, a mechanism to run um, uh, in-system tests is, is becoming more and more important. Um, so we study introducing a, a new technology called in-system test compress, um, which enables you to deliver your um, your ATPG patterns in an in-system scenario, um, so enabling you to get um, manufacturing quality test, uh, put it in an in-system um, setup. So looking out into the future, we see that this type of technology is what is going to be required um, to meet the new um, requirements going forward. So with all that technology um, that we have as part of the test and solution, um, how do you go ahead and get started? Well, first of all, the key thing is to remember that um, we have two types of ISO 26262 certification. First off, we have the, um, the actual software tools themselves. So um, all of the, uh, the test and products from a software perspective are, are certified to ISO. 26262. Um, but then on top of that, we have the certification of the actual test IPs themselves, uh, and they're all certified to ASIL level D ready. So in terms of confident levels when coming to using um, the test and technology for building automotive ICs, um, this gives you a huge amount of confidence in terms of uh, that the, the software tools are producing the right, uh, the right output and that the IP is, is already certified for use within your design. Um, in terms of reference material, uh, on the Siemens EDA website, um, there's available a whole range of different white papers um, and, and automotive flows uh, that help you adopt uh, all of the technologies I've talked about today uh, and to use those and to get started with, with implementing them in your, your automotive design. So thank you very much for listening and uh, hope you have a good day.